couple days later since the last time we worked on the knife and uh, let me show you where I'm at with it. So I did the, the bevel and I wasn't quite happy with it. Um, had a problem with one section. It just, I think it was the, remember I, when we heat treated it, we had a little bit of a warp in it. I think it still has a slight and just ever so slight in there. And that was showing up me trying to put the bevel on. So you can see it has much more, um, the bevel's a lot longer. It's around 10 to 15 degrees, somewhere in there. Um, it was more than I wanted in the first place, but you know, it is what it is. It's my first knife. What am I gonna do? Complain and beat myself up? Mm, no. I'm going to just accept it for what it is. You know, it's not perfect, but it, again, it's mine. I made it with my own hands. So, before I moved on, I, I, I reground the bevel. I got it to where I could put, I've got a little bit of an edge on there, nothing, nothing really, you know, yeah, it, it'll cut something if you hack at it, but it's just there, um, just there to make sure I had the bevel ground down enough because once I put everything on, it's going to be really tough to, to put, the, put the bevel on it. So, I also finished sanding the, the blade so it's all ready and now I can do a dry fit and this will be the first time we kind of see it as a knife and that's pretty cool. Um, so took a little bit of work to get here from the last time we talked, you know, I, I was sanding um, and it was getting really nice, but I wasn't quite happy with, I thought my edge was a little too long and I felt like I needed to test that I could put an edge on this and then before I got too far down because once I started getting too far down the road here and get the handle on, I can't really reheat treat this. At that point, it's kind of cut it apart and drill stuff out and sand and grind it down and then do the handle over and everything else. So you kind of want to make sure you're good before you get it go any further. So let's do a dry fit and we'll take a look at it. Then we'll wipe everything down with mineral spirits. Um, I've got epoxy and today's the day where we're going to actually glue this thing up and um, yeah, let it sit overnight. And after that, we've, we've got a knife and it's just shaping the handle down to match the tang. And um, so that shouldn't be too terribly hard. So let's test fit. All right. So uh, what I want to do is I've got everything laid out. I've got my um, the pins um, over here. I've got my pins. I got my knife. I've got my scales. I've I've drilled a couple holes and a little some dimples in the scales. That's just going to give the epoxy something to hold on to. So now we get to try and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we just do a test fitting. So. All right, so now we can kind of see what the knife's going to look like. And what I was wanting to check was the my grind line here. That's on the bad side, here's the good side. So I want to make sure that it this peak here didn't come past the grind line. And it doesn't. So if I needed to put it back on the belt grinder, I could. Again, that's not perfect there, but you know what? It's okay. Um, so really happy with how everything's looking. I think the colors, it's it's gonna be a nice knife. So um, good solid you know most of this this will be ground 
well, all this part up here will be ground down um, and down here. And then I'll work on the shape of the handle when I'm just kind of smoothing it around so it fits, feels good in the hand. Um, but I had to get this, I had to get these parts good to go. So, all right. So let's take this apart and get our stuff together and get ready for the glue up. Wow, I can't believe I'm here. It's been a, uh, been so much fun. It's been a couple, well, it's taken me a couple weeks maybe uh, to do this project, but um, holy cow, this has been, it's been fun. I can't wait to see all this when it's all done. It's polished up and, you know, boiled linseed oil, sanded, everything's good. I, I really can't wait. So, all right, let's get going. I'm going to tape up my my clamps jaws here because epoxy will get everywhere. So I just want to make sure I don't epoxy my clamps onto uh, onto my project here. That would be bad. So just take a little painter's tape and. Uh, Wrap the jaws. I got three of these, so one. Gonna work from right to left, but I think I might work from left to right because I got my right hand in the with the epoxy, and my left hand's free for parts. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work from the left side to the right side. So here we go. We are now committed to assembling this knife. And I want to make sure I get epoxy everywhere. forgot to wrap my knife handle, my knife blade, so it helps protect it from extraneous epoxy. Thankfully I have a long work time. Okay, so um, my camera light went out right as I was about to do that last part, so, um, which is cleaning off the, um, right up here at the top, try to focus that down on it, at the top of the glue up, you want to, do this, there we go, ah, sweet, pretty, you need to take mineral spirits and wipe that area down 
and uh, this is going to squish the epoxy is going to come out of it but you don't want that to, uh, to get any epoxy on it. I'm going to need to wipe down my all these because there's epoxy stuck to it, so let me, I'll take care of that in just a second. Anyway, so tomorrow uh, we'll come back and we'll have um, a knife. This takes 12 hours to cure. I like that I've got epoxy squishing out everywhere. That tells me it's all the way through and through, which is good. Pins fit good. This should be great. So. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Hey, so it's the next day and um, it looks like it's dried out all night. Had more than 12 hours of cure time. So let's go see what we got. I think it looks pretty good. Let's check it out. All right, well, here we go. We got, um, we got the knife, it's all the glue is fully cured. Um, it looks like I've got one little speck of epoxy on up here, but I can take, the, take care of that. And a little bit over here, but again, I can tape up the blade and just knock that off with some thousand. So we'll take care of that shortly. But um, I guess this is the big reveal. See how good our glue up did, all right? Hmm. Okay, let's start moving things out. All right. Wow, I am... Uh, I'm really pleased. I got epoxy is everywhere on this. Um, yeah, it's looking good. So the next thing I got to do here is um, let's we got to cut off the the brass um, pins. So I'll take care of that right now. So here we have the first look at the knife. Now I know these pins are not all in line and a lot of people do it, but I wanted this front pin to be centered. And, uh, and because the knife has a little bit of a curve on it, so the, 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 it really has a little bit of this going on here, I, I wanted all these pins to be kind of centered. So this is about the center of the, uh, the tang right there. So now comes the process of I got to grind down and shave down everything down to the bare metal all the way around. And don't want to overheat the epoxy. So I'm going to use my one by 30 and put on a heavy grit belt. Put a, that uh, 80 grit belt and start shaping this up. Then I'll take it over. Once I get this profile done, well, first thing I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take it on the belt sander first and get this, these smoothed down. Yeah, that's what I'll do first. I think, you know, I've got this down here now where it's um, 
The pins are all ground down flat. Um, but now I need to start removing some of this material up here. And I'm going to eventually get to my 1 by 30. But um, I think I can start on this one because it's a little bit beefier. And I can start kind of getting some of this material off of here. I'll do it in here. There's a lot of dust coming off here, so I put on the mask. Especially, you know, this is uh, this is Bacote. It's a uh, an Asian hardwood or South American. Anyway, it's not something native, something you know, and it's putting off a lot of dust. So I'm going to mask up and just to be safe. I actually got it down to the metal on one part. But uh, I think I've got it far enough that and I'm coming up the heck on that belt. So I'm going to switch to my 1x and uh, my 1x30. And then because I, I have better control with it because um, I don't want to nick this up here. Um, this part right here I don't want to nick. And uh, I want to make sure I get it just down to the metal. And then once I do that, I'll have the prof the outline shape. Now I can take rasps and I can start working on the grip. But already it feels a lot, feels a lot better. Wow, this is pretty cool. All right, let's go over to the one by thirty. I have a a one hundred and twenty belt on here because my eighty grit is really gummed up from the last time I worked on this. So I expect this is going to take a little work uh, to get down to what I need and uh, maybe get a belt cleaner, but hey, let's just take off. Put the mask back on. start with some 120. I want to get all this epoxy off of here and then get this little section right here cleaned up. Profiles cut into it. Look at that. Wow. This is getting uh, so, so close. But the next thing to do is to figure out what I want the, this, this top profile to look like, mark it out, and then start kind of working it towards that. All right. So, first measurement. So I'm just roughing in. All right, so we've got it all roughed in and uh, pretty pleased. The waist looks pretty close. I think it's right here I can do a little more. Looks a little off. Feels feels better in the hand. So obviously I need to knock off this but um, I think the I think those, those curves, uh, a little bit there, just a little bit more tweaking, and uh, that one's just a little high, so I'll take care of that. I got it rough rounded around. Oh, it feels good. Oh, it feels so good. Oh my gosh. This is, uh, this is 
really awesome. So I have a couple scratches here to sand out. I can do that. But now I need to sand uh, maybe a little bit of, maybe hit this corner right there just a smidge, even everything up. But anyway, now I've got to go and finish sand. So I'm going to start with my 120 and we'll do just like we did the front part there. We'll do 120 all the way around Then we'll do 220, 1000 and then 2000. I may have some 800 but I've got 400. I'm going to spare you the, uh, the endless sanding that's going to come next. And, uh, but I'm going to take it from, I got the 120 done, so now it's going to be 220, probably 800 or 400, and then 1,000, I think 400, and then 1,000, and then 2,000, uh, until it matches the front part up here that uh, it's all polished. And when I get to 1,000, I'll polish off this little bit of epoxy that got on the wood right here. Um, and then we'll double check everything and then finish it in boiled linseed oil. So when we come back, handle will be all sanded. All right, we're back. Um, spent a quite a long time sanding. Well, not actually quite a long time. It really went pretty quick and I'm still going to do blade polishing and all that, but we're down to the finishing step. So. I've got it all polished. Look, I think the scratches are out. Um, I went from, I did, used 120, then 220, then I had some, I think I had some 400, 800, 400 and 1,000, and then I finished it off with 2,000, so it is, it is awesome. So now um, it's time to put the handle in boil, and cover boiled linseed oil and let it do its thing and uh, then we're ready just to clean up and we're basically done with the build so and we're basically done with the build so uh, yeah this was uh, exciting to say the least or interesting learned a lot so let's uh, let's wrap this thing up here we go full linseed oil Okay, so now we can wipe it off and see the results of all this work. Oh, good Lord, look, that is, oh man. I am pleased. This is just... Look at that. Oh my gosh. 
Just, hmm. Well, there we have it. This is uh, my handmade, American-made bushcraft knife. 100% made by me. I could not be more happy. Yeah, is it perfect? No, there's a little, you know, part of it is my tooling. I'm gonna work on that. My, the table I have on that little Harbor Freight thing, the last grind it started tipping. So I've got an idea for a table where the, the grinder slips inside of it and it's got a flat top with um, threaded rod to raise the pitch. So that means I don't need that little device. I can just clamp it to an angle iron, which is always gonna be 90 degrees, and let the table always be the right 10 degree, 15, whatever, 12. And, and it's a big enough platter that it handles both sides. There was just too much movement going on, and that's what caused that, but... Um, This was, a, this was a really fun project. Um, somebody mentioned to me, is like, oh yeah, you, know, you must have spent a lot of money on tools. Tools make it go faster. I could have spent a long time with a, and built a bevel jig for a file. You can do that. Um, I'm a little too ADD. So I like, you know, I have tools. Um, I think I bought one. I already had a already had the uh, belt sander, which I bought off of Craigslist. I think I paid twenty-five dollars for that years and years ago. I bought that and a drill press from the same guy off Craigslist. He was getting rid of his shop and or upgrading or something. So you can find the deals. Um, but I bought bought the the belt grinder for fifty bucks at, at Harbor Freight. Yeah, I know I wanted to buy American, but sometimes it's not. You know, wasn't in the cards. The rest of the stuff is all, you know, just taking the time, cutting things out, you know, grinding the metal down, being patient. I didn't buy, I didn't build a forge. I did it in my fire pit in the backyard on my patio. I, I didn't have all these expensive, you know, blacksmith stuff. Um, I used what I had and just took patience and I learned and this is the first one I'm probably gonna build another one but so I, I, there's somebody I want to give a knife to so I am um, I'm probably gonna build another one but in fact I'll, I know I'll build another one I might build a couple of them this this is a fun little hobby to have but um, before I can build another knife I need to uh, Before I build another knife, I need to take some time and build, make a leather sheath for this. And then I'm going to learn how to do the etching because what I want to do is put my initials on the blade. But I'm going to try it out first on easier stuff. This one is, this is about two weeks worth of work for me. Not two weeks straight. If I had known what I was doing, I'm sure, I mean, I watched Walter Sorrell build a knife in two hours and yeah you can do it they do but they have all the tools they know exactly what they're doing they there is no guessing maybe you know they've done this enough that they know exactly what tool to use for what situation how to address everything i'm not there yet but i'm exciting i'm really really excited about this so that wraps up uh, the bushcraft knife build. The only thing that's left is a bunch of beauty shots and some uh, some nice product video, which we'll keep right.